Rapid sequence intubation. Sounds intense, right? It's a uh, critical airway procedure. So what's the core idea? Fast sedation, then paralysis. That allows for quick intubation. It's essentially for um, critical patients. So speed is key, right? But what about safety? Isn't there a risk of... Um complications? Absolutely. Hypocrisy is a major concern. And aspiration is another one. A failed intubation is also a possibility. You know. Wow. High stakes. So what are the most common induction agents used? Atominate, ketamine, and propofol are frequently used. Each has its own um, profile. Let's talk about atominate. What are its advantages? Rapid onset, and it's hemodynamically stable. It's a good choice for many patients. Okay. And ketamine, what makes it different? It's a good option for hypotensive patients, plus it preserves airway reflexes. I see. Propofol is another popular choice. What are its characteristics? Fast acting, but it can cause hypotension. Careful monitoring is definitely needed. Right, so choosing the right agent depends on the patient's condition. What about Paralix? Cessnocholine and rocuronium are common choices. They cause muscle paralysis. Preoxygenation is crucial, isn't it? How long should we um, preoxygenate? Aim for three five minutes of 100% oxygen. That maximizes oxygen reserves. Okay. And patient positioning? What's the best approach? A semi upright position, semi fowlers, that helps prevent aspiration. Makes sense. Optimizing oxygenation and reducing aspiration risk. What about difficult airways? Awake intubation might be safer in those cases. Always have a backup plan, though. Let's discuss the potential complications again. What are the most serious ones? Hypoxia, aspiration, and failed intubation are the big three. Right. How can we minimize these risks? Standardized protocols, proper training, and excellent teamwork. It's all about that. Teamwork is essential. What are medication dosing? Having readily available charts is vital. Accurate dosing is critical. What are some strategies to improve RSI success rates? Regular training, simulation exercises, and clear communication. You know, the usual stuff. Regular drills are key. What about the role of protocols? Standardized protocols are essential. They guide the process. So consistency and preparation are paramount. What about post-intubation care? Careful monitoring of vital signs, oxygen saturation, and ventilation. How do we handle difficult airways? Have alternative techniques ready. Consider awake intubation. Awake intubation is a good alternative. What about surgical airways? Surgical airway is a last resort. It's a life-saving procedure. It's a critical skill they have. What about the use of video laryngoscopy? It can improve visualization and success rates. How important is ongoing education and training for healthcare providers? Extremely important. It's a constantly evolving field. Right. What are some key areas for continued learning? New techniques, medications, and equipment. Also, simulation training. Simulation is invaluable. What about the importance of teamwork? Teamwork is crucial for successful RFI. Clear communication is key. So rapid sequence intubation is a complex procedure. What's the bottom line? It's a time-sensitive procedure, requires skill, preparation, and teamwork. And the importance of minimizing complications cannot be overstated. Any final thoughts? Continuous learning and adherence to best practices are essential. Excellent points. Thank you for this discussion. You're welcome.